my actual eyesight. Is there the high drive? Deep center. Go, go, go. We're out of here. We're out of here. Say a playa. Just like they drew it up in Hollywood. Caladros, the 3 2. Swag in the boots. And the Audubon Green Wave have upset the Kingsway Dragons. And this is it for good. The Audubon Green Wave are back in the Final Four. A gold pile on their side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to DW Broadcasting's coverage of Men Barcelona. From our entire crew, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one, folks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, baseball season has arrived for New Jersey High School. It's a battle between a powerhouse in the Olympic and a tri-county perennial powerhouse. It's the Cherry Hill West Lions and the Gloucester Catholic Rams here from beautiful Joe Barth Field right here on Dan Wilkins Broadcasting. I'm flying solo today, but we've got an excellent game ready to be played. Coach Dennis Barth meeting with the umpires at home plate as the crowd will start to file in in just a couple of minutes. Just shy of a four o'clock start time, getting ready to go as scheduled for our first scrimmage of the 2024 baseball campaign. We'll be in Audubon tomorrow for a clash between the Clearview Pioneers and the Audubon Green Wave. After that on Sunday, March 24th, it's community college softball between Northampton and Salem, a doubleheader starting at 12 o'clock. We're gonna have quite the matchup today between two perennial powerhouses in South Jersey. Gloucester Catholic on the DWB preseason power rankings got the number one spot. And of course, Cherry Hill West to the angst of some on the side of the purple and white, they got seventh in the Olympic Conference. But I'll, I'll tell you, in defense of my own rankings, it was one of the hardest conferences, if not the hardest conference in South Jersey to properly judge and rank. So. One through seven could easily be interchangeable through the first two weeks of the season. But for Cherry Hill West today, it is going to be a good amount of a uh, good amount of firepower on the hill this afternoon. Ryder Garino is going to get the start for Cherry Hill West. The Slim Reaper, as they call him, the South Carolina Gamecocks commit, will be getting the start to start 2024. The pitcher for Gloucester Catholic is going to be, at least we're going to start with, um, Gallagher to be followed by Guy Lynham, Henry Pancoast, and McCullough to close out the game. Those are your probable pitchers here for this March 21st scrimmage, the first possible day as allowed by the rules to, to play scrimmages. I apologize if my voice is breaking up a little bit. It is quite cold here at Gloucester Catholic, but we do not care because baseball is on the air. We'll be right back. Cherry Hill West and Gloucester Catholic coming up right after this. Garden State Pet Center is an independently owned, full-service pet store. Our specialty is promoting companionship between people and animals by providing the healthiest product choices available, including all-natural foods, supplements that support and relieve health issues, and innovative products for pet parents. Our goal is to provide our customers with a relaxing environment, and while we're not striving to be the biggest store on the East Coast, we're striving to be the best. No other pet store will make you feel at home like we do. At Garden State Pet Center, we view pets as members of the family. We don't believe in fast, high-pressure sales but instead matching up the right pet with the right owners as you are making a lifelong commitment. Together with our team members, we would like your visit to our store to be both enjoyable and educational. Simply drop in and take a look around. View the birds, reptiles, small animals, toys, food, cages, and miscellaneous items. Learn of the services we have to offer and decide for yourself if this is the store you'd like to call your home away from home. Victor Santucci, owner of Garden State Pet Center. Visit us today at 226 South Whitehorse Pike in Audubon, New Jersey. We're open seven days a week for all of your pets' needs.
And with that, Gloucester Catholic is taking the field for their first scrimmage of 2024 here at the beautiful Joe Barth Field in Brooklawn. I'm Dan Wilkins, your commentator slash everyman for today's broadcast. As we said, this is our first of two scrimmages this week. We are visiting Audubon as they face Clearview on Friday, March 22nd. But today, we've got a powerhouse matchup. I wish these guys played each other in a regular season because this would be an absolute thriller of a matchup to see. The starting pitcher for the Gloucester Catholic Rams this afternoon on a brisk Thursday is going to be Mr. Gallagher getting the start here for Gloucester Catholic in his first start of 2024. As Gloucester Catholic wears the black tops with the red accents and white jerseys. For Jimmy Gallagher, this is going to be quite the symbolic turn for him after a 6.77 ERA in his first year as a Ram in 2023. Ten and two-thirds innings, ten earned runs, 12 walks, eight strikeouts, and one hit batter. He appeared in four games last year. In two of those four games, Gloucester Catholic won, and they went two and two in the rest. They lost to Williamstown and Steiner in games where he appeared, but beat Cumberland and Washington Township in games where Gallagher was on the hill. His best start was probably in the 13-9 win, or at least the most uh, longevity-based start would be over Washington Township on May 16th of last year. He pitched four and a third innings. Gave up five runs, but struck out four, and eventually got the win in a 13-9 slugfest for the Rams. Your starting lineup for the Cherry Hill West Lions, as led by Dan McMaster. The Alabama commit, John Young Jr., takes the leadoff spot at the shortstop. Then it's going to be followed by Leo Orifice, the junior center fielder, class of 2025. Behind the plate and batting third will be none other than Nick Mary, uh, Mararchi, excuse me as he takes up the third spot. In right field, batting fourth is going to be Grant Fournier, the sophomore, as Ryder, excuse me, Aiden Ryder, the sophomore third baseman, takes up the third base spot. It's going to be Macri at first, batting sixth, then Josue Holloway, Martello, and Bechtel as the last couple of guys in that Cherry Hill West order. Here we go. Baseball in South Jersey is about to get underway. It's Cherry Hill West and Gloucester Catholic getting started here for our first scrimmage of the 2024 campaign. We'll get started with Jonathan Young Jr., the Alabama commit and star middle infielder for this Cherry Hill West Lions team. The first pitch of the afternoon is grounded back up the middle, sliding stop throw to first is going to get away. They do not call the ball dead, so John Young will hold it first. And we will start the afternoon with an E4. And that'll be charged against Bogart, the second baseman, for the Rams. After Young reached, it'll now be Leo Orifice, the center fielder here after one pitch and already a runner recorded here in the first. That one misses, 1-0. One -oh. There's a fly ball deep into right center field going over and making the catch in deep territory and holding Young at first. A nice play out there in center for the first out. Terra Nova with a great play out there in center to keep that ball out of the deep outfield grass. And Orifice is retired. Here's Nick Mararchi. And he takes the first pitch, drives it into left field. That's a base hit. Young moves to second. And the knock by Mararchi. Puts two runners on with one away for Cherry Hill West. Well, something that's going to be heavily debated across, you know, these first couple of scrimmages is, you know, Gloucester Catholic looking to repeat for their 21st state title. They won their 20th over St. Mary's of Rutherford last year. Cherry Hill West, as the cleanup man, 
for the Lions, Mr. Fournier. Throwback to second. Actually, he held on to the baseball, but still. Caused Young to dive back, but nothing further. Two on, one out. And here's Fournier, or Fournier. I know there's an NBA player of the same name, the New York Knicks. They will call a balk against Gloucester Catholic. That's going to move both runners up. So Jimmy Gallagher gets charged. And that moves two runners in the scoring position. This now puts Marachi on second and Young on third. Already trouble for Jimmy Gallagher as the first pitch is a strike to Fournier. But, you know, the, the thorn in the side of Cherry Hill West last year was easily the Delsey Crusaders. They're not even in the same conference, although it would definitely be interesting to see them in the Olympic. You know, we had Delsey second in the Tri-County Conference preseason power rankings. Uh, that one's fouled back, 0-2. But they beat Cherry Hill West, De Delsey that is, they beat Cherry Hill West in the semifinals of the Thank You Classic. And then coming back around and defeating them in the semifinal round of South Jersey Group 3 was none other than Delsey. And even though you're not going to see them much squaring off in a regular season game, they played them twice and they lost both times. And it was the site of a significant hurdle in Cherry Hill West's campaign last year. Time is called. 8-4. The sophomore third baseman for Cherry Hill West is on deck as the fifth batter of the frame already. We've gone through a bunch of them quick as Gallagher already in a tough jam. That one skips in. Coming to the plate is Young, and he will score. The throw skips away, and now it's left unattended in the infield, and both runs will score. How about that for a turn of events and a comedy of errors? A two-run wild pitch as the ball got away from Braden Lipoff, the transfer from Kingsway. And two runs will come around to score. Young and Mirarchi make it 2-0 Lions. That is a very un-Gloucester Catholic-like play, in, in my opinion. I mean, it just, I think spring training kind of what I call it, scrimmages, spring training, same thing. You know, it's very important that you get these kind of shakes and these jitters out of the way before Gloucester Catholic opens their season versus Clearview on April 1st, you know, because you don't want to make those plays when the games count. That one misses in on a breaking ball, and it's three and two. Gallagher already allowing two runs in this first inning, and now in some even more trouble. He is scheduled to throw two innings today if the lineup card holds true. That one is fouled back. Count is still full. To Fournier with Aiden Ryder on deck for the Lions. Just got a piece of it and it's foul. It'll be Fournier, Ryder, and Macri, the first baseman for Cherry Hill West. Three balls, two strikes, one away. Two runs across for Cherry Hill West this frame. That one is a high chopper. Will stay in the infield. Gallagher tosses it underhand. And it looks like he'll be safe. A tough play for Gallagher to make as the ball was chasing it down the line. And Fournier gets aboard. As now another Cherry Hill West sophomore will take the plate now, Aiden Ryder. Ryder in his freshman year batted 176 in 51 at bats. One extra base hit, 11 walks, just as many RBIs. Six stolen bases in his freshman campaign. I apologize, uh, we still have last year's roster up, so 
Ryder is a junior, class of 25. I thought it looked a little funky because it still said John Young Jr. was a uh, was a junior, but I knew he was class of 24. And the commit to Alabama. A lot of SEC talent with Cherry Hill West. As we said, uh, the Slim Reaper, who we're going to see in just a couple of minutes, that being Ryder Garino, committed to South Carolina, home of the Gamecocks, and he'll be meeting John Young Jr. a couple times with Alabama. Alabama baseball has actually been pretty good this year. I think when we think of Bama collegiate sports in general, it's not something that usually comes to mind. Usually college football is what comes to mind when you think of Alabama. Maybe even basketball, because I'm pretty sure they're the four seed in uh, March Madness this year. I know they're playing, uh, I think it's College of Charleston. I'm, I'm not sure. I filled out my bracket this morning probably about an hour before the actual brackets closed but none of my teams are in the tournament so makes it a little odd for me you know picking a winner that's not biased or skewed that one's fouled back so Aiden Ryder with a runner on first, one away. Luciano Macri will now bat, as that is a strikeout of Aiden Ryder. Luciano Macri, class of 25 junior. 129 average in 2023, eight RBIs, four for 31. Had three RBIs and a 14 to one win over Seneca back on May 10th of last year. Fournier still on first. The 1-0, misses out, 2-0. Don't forget, tomorrow we'll be in action at Audubon versus the Clearview Pioneers, which is the team that Gloucester Catholic will open their schedule against. Audubon and Clearview scrimmaged each other in mid-April of 2021 when their season started a little bit later due to the COVID pandemic. That was on April 17th, 2021. Audubon beat Clearview 9-6. So all of those seniors that are away on senior trip right now for Audubon, they uh, were freshmen back in the day. Swing and a miss. And a big spot for Jimmy Gallagher here. He's got two innings scheduled, but he's already allowed two runs, and Gloucester Catholic's offense is going to look to back him up in the bottom half of the first. Fournier's running. The throw is going to skip off of Lipoff, and now getting the second uncontested is Fournier. Well, they'll try it again, and they'll see what they can get. See if anything can come out of this. Two outs in the frame, a fly out and a strikeout of Ben Gallagher's two retirements so far, and that's going to be ball four. So Macri walks. And now the seventh batter of the frame will make their appearance, and that's going to be Josue Holloway. Holloway played hero for Cherry Hill West as a sophomore. His lone homer of the season was a walk-off in the playoffs versus Tom's River South, a three-run homer. That took down Tom's River South 4-1 in a nine-inning game. Gallagher is set, looks back at second, delivers to Holloway. That one misses up and in. 2-0. 
And now Dennis Barth, the Gloucester Catholic head coach, is going to come out and talk to Gallagher and just get things back on the same page. I mean, you know, it's not a terrible frame for Gallagher. I, I've seen plenty worse. I just I think that uh, Gloucester Catholic, again, you know, they are trying to get all of the eeks and quirks and gadgets and gizmos, whatever. They're trying to get all of that figured out before things get too funky at the start of the season. They're just trying to make sure that he uh, is in his groove. And you want to make sure your pitcher is comfortable, you know? You want to make sure that your rotation is all set. And if there's a time to have a bad outing, I guess now would be the time, you know? I, I guess there's never a good day for a bad outing, but if there's a day that's better than others, it would be now. Misses the Holloway. And it's 3-0. And I think as well, you know, they're they're just trying everybody out. You know, I, I think even in a shorter uh, time frame, when you get through spring training in, in high school ball, you know, you've really only got a week, maybe a week and a half, because the first scrimmage is being played today, and then just a week and a half later, on April 1st, it's opening day. So you don't have that much time to cram in four or five scrimmages on your schedule before everybody's ready to play. So that's why they've got, you know, Guy Lineham and Henry Pankost and McCullough scheduled as the other four pitchers to throw in this scrimmage. Because when you're in a scrimmage like this, you're not really worried about the score. As a ground ball on one knee, throw to first, is in time, and side is retired. Cherry Hill West puts up two runs on a two-run wild pitch. Quite a funky way to end the frame. We go to the bottom of the first. Two nothing. Cherry Hill West. We'll be right back. Bottom of the first here from Joe Barth Field. It will be Cherry Hill West getting their first tips in the field and getting their first opportunities with Ryder Garino on the hill. The commit to the University of South Carolina, the home of the Gamecocks in the SEC as his shortstop John Young Jr., also another SEC commit, will look to tear into this Gloucester Catholic lineup on the defensive side of the ball. Your starting lineup for Gloucester Catholic is going to start with the first three, the center fielder Terranova, followed by Guy Lynham and Jack Mastero with Darius as the DH. Braden Lipoff, the Kingsway transfer behind the plate batting fifth. Danza at the shortstop spot. Henry Pankost in left. Joey Bogart at second base. And McCullough at shortstop. Garino getting it started here versus Terranova.
Jake Terranova, the 2024 senior. Three seventy two average in twenty twenty three. Twelve RBIs, sixteen for forty three. Four extra base hits, two each of the double and triple variety, ten walks, and fourteen stolen bases. That one skips away. Garino kicks and delivers. Line shot, and that one goes foul. Two balls, two strikes. The defensive lineup for Cherry Hill West this afternoon is going to be in the infield, Nick Mararchi, Luciano Macri, Bechtel at second, Young at short, and Aiden Ryder at third. Outfield goes to Holloway, Orifice, and Fournier. High chopper. This one will go right back to Garino, who flips it underhand and gets the out. One away. Good way to be efficient, I'll tell you that. Here's the number two man for Gloucester Catholic, Guy Lynham. Class of 2026 sophomore. 364 average in his opening campaign for the Rams. Two homers, two triples, eight doubles, all told 24 for 66. A 636 slugging percentage. And along with that, a 13.12 ERA on the hill, but that was only in three appearances. So take that with a grain of salt. And he was also facing darn good opponents. Was facing uh, Williamstown, Donovan Catholic, and Gloucester Tech. Gloucester Tech, though, they went on a, with Rob Epolito as the uh, head coach there, they went on a wild Cinderella run last year. It didn't accumulate to too much in the playoffs, but it was incredible to see what they were capable of doing. You know, I remember when they beat Gloucester Catholic last year, six six to four. You know, I almost couldn't believe my eyes, but considering how they were playing at the beginning of the year, that's a swing and a miss. And a strikeout to Guy Lynham. Brings up the second out of the frame. This will bring up Jack Mastero, the DH. How about this for Jack Mastero? Quarterback slash wide receiver for the Gloucester Catholic Football Club. And along with that, he was top 10 in the state, in the state of New Jersey, in three-pointers with basketball. Gloucester Catholic lost in the non-public B semifinals this past year to Bishop Eustace. But he was ninth in the state with 83, or excuse me, 87 three-pointers. And now he's batting third for the baseball club as a senior, or rather as a junior, class of 25. And that's what's even more impressive. Him being a class of 25 junior with top 10 production from outside of the two-point zone from beyond the arc. And, you know, the Mastero family is probably one of the most well-rounded families in all of South Jersey, you know, and, and the Mastero family with RJ at uh, Rowan College of South Jersey, a perennial cleanup man there. You know, he's a... And, and the Mastero family also has some incredibly thick skin and they've got an incredible, uh, incredible story as well. Uh, the Mastero family had a great loss in... Uh, in the summer as they lost Ray Mastero at the age of 57 passed away following a battle with cancer and you know Jack and RJ and everybody you know they are incredible people and they can play through even with such a heavy heart 
That one misses to Mastero. He'll have another chance here, but I mean, yeah, one of the one of the best families, just overall, very well rounded and incredibly athletic, are the Masteros. That is ball four, and Jack Mastero takes first base. Ryder Garino, not really wasting any time. He's gotten in his groove here. Throw over to first, nothing going on. Tate Darius, the 2024 senior, 322 career batting average in two years at Gloucester Catholic. If that one misses, 1 0. One homer last year had 104 at bats. One of the nearly guaranteed starters for Gloucester Catholic, 22 RBIs. He's got 44 total, 34 for 104, a 442 slugging percentage. His lone homer of 2023, of his junior year. Came versus Delcy in the 11-2 win in the Diamond Classic final. And remember, these two very well could have met in the Diamond Classic final last year, but Cherry Hill, Le uh, Cherry Hill West lost to Delcy 5-1 in a game that brought the Crusaders to the final to lose by nine to Gloucester Catholic. You know, that was a it was a great production over there at Pittman at Alcyon Park. And it was a good game too. Just Gloucester Catholic really overpowered everybody. And you know, that's something that we talked about, and that's something that I talked to myself and, and a couple of uh, and a couple of buddies when I was making the Tri County rankings, the preseason power rankings, one of the things that we had talked about was, well, you know, Delcy is the Thank You Classic runner-up, but who won the Thank You Classic? Well, it was, I'm sorry, not the Thank You Classic, the Diamond Classic, um, Gloucester Catholic. So you kind of have to put them one and two. They each were, you know, favorites in South Jersey's premier tournament. Strikeout for Tate Darius, and the side is retired. We go to the second, 2 nothing, Gloucester Catholic.
First pitch at the top of the second was a hit by pitch. I apologize for the delay, but wasting no time. And Cherry Hill West is going to put a runner on first with their eighth batter in the order, Martello. And here's Bechtel. A little bit of chin music there to Bechtel. 1-0. Fly ball. Shallow left. Who's got it? It'll be taken in at short. One away. So Danza makes the catch. And that brings us back up to the top of the order for John Young Jr. Young reached on an error by the second baseman his first time. Not sure what the delay is. But it looks like they'll get back into it. So here's Gallagher. That ball skips in, goes to the netting behind the dish, and Bechtel will get the second. He rounds the base and holds up there. Drew Bechtel, the junior second baseman. For Cherry Hill West, went three for 10 in a limited sample size last year. All singles, one hit by pitch. Went two for four as a freshman, so his career line is five for 14, a 357 average. That one misses out. But Young's got some serious pop in his bat. And, you know, we'll be here for for three games in, uh, in April on Saturday for coverage of the Thank You Classic. And actually, we'll be back for two games on Sunday. So it'll be five games total. Here's a fly ball out to deep left center field by Young. That ball gets over the head, and that ball will roll all the way to the church. Coming in to score is going to be Bechtel. Young holds it second. RBI double. 3-0, West. So John Young Jr. rips one into the gap, and we've got ourselves a 3-0 game. I apologize, Martello was the one that came around to score. So here is Orifice, the number two hitter for West. That one misses, and now the catcher and Gallagher lip off. They will meet on the hill here to discuss things, but a 3 0 Cherry Hill West lead here in the top of the second. A big RBI double that just, just got over the head of Pancoast and left. Again, with Joe Barth Field, not much you can do about that. And that's something that I was going to mention is that, you know, look, we're going to be covering five games here on the weekend of April 20th and 21st. And you're probably going to see 
zero home runs in all five of those games. That one's outside, 2-0. You know, even for the powerhouse teams, like on Sunday, we've got Tom's River East and Bayonne at 2 o'clock and Pope John and Donovan Catholic at 4.30. Those are powerhouse teams in their respective conferences. But there's not, I don't think there's going to be a single home run hit unless somebody hooks one down the line. You know, when it comes to pitcher-friendly ballparks, I've seen pitcher-friendly ballparks. This is so friendly to pitchers that it's like giving them a big old bear hug when they walk into the stadium. I mean, you know, 465 feet to center. It's one of the funkiest fields in all of New Jersey. Here's a fly ball hit deep. Out to center, calling for it. Will be Terra Nova, and Young will hold it second. Two away. So Orifice flies out. And here's Nick Mararchi. A lot of good games going on today for scrimmages. Gateway in Salem, Lenape, and Jackson Memorial. Hitman and Buna. There's a strike. Woodstown and Clearview. Foul. Two strike count with two outs for Mararchi as John Young Jr. has collected an RBI double to his name here in the top of the second. Inside, one, two. I'm surprised I hear the ice cream truck. 45 degrees and windy <laughs> here at Gloucester Catholic. They're going to throw back to second base. Young is back in safely. Like, I would have thought if you're going to hear the ice cream truck, it's going to be a little bit later in the month. It's going to be, well, it's actually not going to break 50 degrees for the next couple of, uh, next, next couple of weeks. It might be mid 50s at best like today the low is going to be 29 it's going to be pouring rain on Saturday we were supposed to cover Bergen Community College and Camden Community College but that double header got postponed due to the impending rain I mean it's going to be 90% chance flood watches are in effect and they say that Mirachi went around so that's a swing and a miss Gloucester Catholic allows another run thanks to an RBI double by John Young Jr. One and a half through here at Gloucester Catholic, 3-0 West.
It's the bottom of the second inning. This broadcast is brought to you by Garden State Pet Center, the place to be for making sure that your pet stays happy and healthy with organic food along with toys, food, cages, accessories, and more. Visit today, seven days a week at the 600 block of Whitehorse Pike in Audubon or visit online anytime at exoticpetsnj.com. Going to get started with a newcomer to the Gloucester Catholic scene, Braden Lipoff. Now, we've seen him play before, but not in the maroon and gold. We've seen him play in the black and red for the Kingsway Dragons, where he was as a freshman last year, was a star catcher for them, and after one year decided to transfer to Gloucester Catholic. There's a ground ball that's going to skip in a right field for Braden Lipoff. It dies in the grass, which hasn't been mowed in a little while. And Braden Lipoff with his first knock as a ram. Braden Lipoff did make our top 20 catchers in South Jersey, a list that was headed by uh, Mike McGinley, one of three juniors in Delsey history to ever reach 100 hits. So here is Noah Danza. He's a middle infielder who was a sophomore, class of 26, did not appear in any games for Gloucester Catholic last year. Unfortunately, I... Ooh, close call. Sorry I didn't get that on camera, folks, but that is a throw over to first. And he was called safe, looked a little close to me. They tried it again, and they still didn't get it. I mean, I'm surprised they are this cautious about Braden Lipoff. Thrown over there twice, and they're making sure that he does not get his flowers. And Braden Lipoff is making sure that Garino doesn't get his flowers either. Garino is scheduled for two innings this afternoon. He has been pretty consistent in those two frames. They do it again, and now the throw gets away. How about third time's the charm? Lipoff is off to the races. He slides into second and is safe on a E1 as the throw got away from Garino, and that allows the catcher Lipoff to advance to second. I was gonna say, you can only throw over so many times without either giving up an error or getting the runner out. You know, there's there's a magic number where it just pops and you make one mistake and it costs you big time. That ball is headed to the street and foul. Tapper, foul, one and two. We've got a West Arm and a Gloucester Catholic Arm warming up in the bullpen as Guy Lineham is gonna get ready to take over in the top half of the third and then you're gonna have uh, Hanny will take over for West. Ground ball to second. In time, one away. Lip off advances to third. So Austin Hanny. There's a strike called. One on one. It's 
Swing and a miss. And there's two down. So this will bring up Joey Bogart. After Pancoast was retired on a strikeout as Garino, nice pitch, but just missed 1-0. Fouled back, one and one. It'll be Bogart and then McCullough to round out the order for Gloucester Catholic. One, one. Breaking ball is called and it's a one and two. A very supportive Cherry Hill West outfield cheering on his teammate Ryder Garino as he looks to get out of the jam with a runner 90 feet from home. There's a ground ball out to third. It's taken in a nice scoop and a nice bobble to take it in and retire the side. A beautiful play over at third by Aiden Ryder to recover from the bobble and get the inning over. We go to the top of the third, 3-0 West. Has opened a second location on Creek Road in Belmar, operating in Philadelphia for over 25 years and now expanding into South Jersey. Tommy D's is the place to go for kitchen cabinets, countertops, and cabinet accessories, heavily discounted compared to big box retailers. Stop in, take a seat, and watch as our experienced kitchen designer makes the kitchen of your dreams right in front of you. Tommy D's is the best in the business for quality kitchen countertops and cabinets that fit all budgets. Call us today at 856-210-9504 or visit the new location in person on the corner of Creek Road and Harding Avenue in Belmar next to the 42 on-ramp. Guy Lynham appearing in his first scrimmage of 2024. We've got ourselves a good one here. Cherry Hill West up by three over Gloucester Catholic. The offense started off in an unusual way after a two-run wild pitch was charged against Gloucester Catholic. An RBI double by John Young Jr. Got the offense back on pace in the top of the second inning for their third run of the night. Guy Lynham's first pitch misses inside, 1-0. So here is Grant Fournier. That one misses, 2-0. It just seems like right now, I think Gloucester Catholic has so much pitching depth available to them that they, they can kind of throw out anybody out there and they'll make it work. And remember, this is a scrimmage. You know, I, I think anybody who says that, oh, they're down by three to Cherry Hill West, you know, let's be honest here. If these two were to play each other in the regular season, I think this game would be a lot more of a dead even heat. But because of the fact that it's a scrimmage, you know, you're not really looking at the scoreboard. I, I can't see the Joe Bar scoreboard because it's facing the wrong direction here, but... 
you got to think that the scoreboard's probably not even turned on. It wasn't turned on when I last walked over there, but... It's going to make it 3-1. And the pitch from Lynham skips in. That's ball four. So Fournier, for the second time today, draws a walk. And we go to Aiden Ryder now to continue the rally for West. Aiden Ryder struck out his first time. Lineham, as we said, the sophomore, had a high ERA his freshman year as there's a bunt. But no, they're saying that it hit the batter. And that will put two runners on. How about this? So Ryder gets drilled on the first pitch. And now this brings up Luciano McCree. McCree walked his first time. Line them ready to go. versus McCree with two runners on, nobody out for Cherry Hill West in the top half of the third. First pitch, fires one in there, and it's called a strike, 0-1. That one goes in the dirt, and now both runners are going to be on the move. They will both get in uncontested. So Ryder moves to second, Fortier moves to third. Just a couple minutes shy of 5 o'clock here on a brisk Thursday afternoon from Gloucester Catholic. That one misses. Two balls, one strike. And of course, today is kind of a nostalgic day for us Philly sports fans. 20 years today, 20 years ago today was the demolition of Veterans Stadium in 2004 to pave way for Lincoln Financial Field and Citizens Bank Park. I mean, I was I was just a little too late to remember that. I was born in 2005, so it's a little before my time, but I have heard both the glory stories and the horror stories from those years. And I think, uh, you know, we're happy with what we have now in Philly with the Philly Sports Complex as there's a strikeout. One away. First strikeout for Lynham this afternoon and his stint on the hill. And that retires McCree. Here's Josue Holloway. Two on, two runners in scoring position. And only one out in the third. A good start. Lions are going to look to capitalize on it already with a 3-0 lead. First pitch from Lynham. Fouled back. Takes a couple of hops behind the plate, and it's 0-1. This broadcast is brought to you by Tommy D's Home Improvement. Visit today to make your dream kitchen come true with wholesale kitchen cabinets and countertops at heavily discounted rates compared to big box retailers. Visit today at 612 Creek Road in Belmar, next to the 42 on-ramp. 
outside. One and one. Martello and Bechtel will follow. Swing and a miss. One and two. What makes a little bit of, uh, of watching scrimmages easier is that you know who the scheduled pitchers are going to be. I asked both coaches, Dennis Barth and Dan McMaster, to, to just give me a list of the probable pitchers and where they'll be scheduled because having to sift through a long roster of guys, especially when Cherry Hill West only has warm-ups on, they're not playing in their regular uh, jerseys. They probably haven't been supplied with them yet is my, is my guess. Gloucester Catholic does have jerseys on. The black pullovers, which actually do look qu quite nice. I would just imagine wearing them in like May and June is definitely not ideal. A strikeout for Lynham as Martello, or rather Hol Holloway, is retired. Second strikeout in a row for Lynham. And there's two away. So here's the catcher, Martello, with runners on second and third for Cherry Hill West. Lineham ready to go. Kicks and delivers. High and in. 1-0. You know, I think what's really interesting about this Gloucester Catholic program is their ability to, to work through adversity. You know, they won the state title last year in the non-public bracket. And they do it with one of the most rigorous schedules in all of South Jersey. You know, we're covering a couple of games this year that are just outright insane in terms of how in terms of how good the matchups are but that'll be a line out to right to retire the side cherry hill west leaves two aboard we go to the bottom of the third still three nothing lions
lefty Hanny will make his first appearance of 2024 here at Gloucester Catholic. They lead 3-0 over the Rams in what has been a good game so far, but kind of a testament to how much pitching can really make or break your day. Gloucester Catholic's offense hasn't been bad, but Ryder Garino shut them down for the first two frames, and now the lefty delivers outside to Tyler McCullough, and it's 1-0. It'll be McCullough, Terranova, and Guy Lynham, 9-1-2 and two in the top, or rather in the bottom half of the third for Gloucester Catholic. 1-0, swing and a miss, 1-1. We'll have two coverage, uh, or actually three games to cover next week. Lenape and Audubon on Friday, I'm sorry, on Tuesday, March 26th. So swing and a miss. One and two. Audubon and Triton, Thursday, March 28th, and then ACIT, or Atlantic Tech, and Gloucester City, right down the road from here on 1.30. At four o'clock on March 29th, which is a Friday, there's a strike three called on the inside corner, and McCullough is down on strikes. One away. This will turn over back to the top for Jake Terranova. Grounded out back to the hill in the first. Three nothing Cherry Hill West here in the bottom half of the third as that one misses outside, 1-0. As we said, these first two hitters, Terranova and Lynham have been absolute powerhouses in terms of batting average this year and also in 2023. Both batters with over 300s to their name. Two O pitch to Terranova. Whew. Three O. Definitely a tough, uh, tough one there. Looks like it just missed. And that'll be a four pitch walk. So Terra Nova gets aboard. That'll bring up Lynham. Still a nice crowd on hand for the first scrimmage of the year. It doesn't show up too much on the Gloucester Catholic side, but on the Cherry Hill West side, a good amount of folks have traveled down here to watch the game. And a good amount of you guys have also come around to watch this one as well. So we appreciate your viewership even for kind of a last minute scheduled game for us. We were supposed to be covering Camden County softball versus Dutchess Community College, but that game was postponed. And of course, another Camden County game was postponed on Saturday. It was supposed to be Bergen Community College and Camden County, throw over to first, nothing going on there. It was supposed to be Bergen and Camden, and then um, that game was postponed to Monday and Tuesday due to the impending rain on Saturday. So they'll play tomorrow a doubleheader at Bergen. And then game three of that series between the Bulldogs and the Cougars. Uh, wait a second, the runner is going down to second base. I don't know if they called a balk or what, but they they're gonna let it stand. So he moved down to second, and probably one of the most easiest stolen bases I've ever seen. Even uh, Fournier was questioning it, like, what in the world was that? So Martello and Henny will talk this one over. Foul, way up there. That one's headed for the dominoes. Two strikes.
Lefty checks in, runner on second base for Gloucester Catholic here in the bottom of the third. There's a hot shot foul. Still two strikes. One ball, two strikes. Runner in scoring position for Gloucester Catholic. West looking back at second. Kicks and delivers. Fouled again. Look out there. <laughs> There's somebody riding by on their uh, on their bicycle and almost got drilled. Now Gloucester Catholic, as you can see, they do have that apparatus over home plate, the uh, the netting to stop foul balls straight up. But you've got to imagine that's that's kind of annoying if you're a catcher because. If a batter hits a ball straight up, you know, one of the one of the best things about being a catcher is being able to take those balls behind home plate and make the catch. Well, that really deprives you of your opportunities when if a ball is hit straight up, it's just going to be rendered dead right away because of the netting. I honestly didn't even know that you could do that, <laughs> you know. I thought you had to leave a certain amount of space, you know, on on a uh, what's it called? Un unobstructed above the catcher and batter. Steps off, but doesn't get anything for it. And now the catcher and pitcher will meet again. Again, this is, you know, the kind of situation where the game's gonna slow down to a screeching halt. We've been here for an hour and 10 minutes and we're only in the bottom of the third. And then there's some games where we'll almost be done by the time that comes around. So these guys are just gonna do their best to make sure that they get everything right, even if it means playing at a little bit of a slower pace than what you might expect in a normal April or May regular season game. There's a ground ball. That is a fair ball picked up by Ryder. Throw across is in time. And now scrambling and scurrying back to second is Terra Nova. And there's two away. They just said the top of the orders up here, but that is Terra Nova. I'm very confused. I guess we missed somebody. Hold on here. I'm going to have to figure this out because they gave us a lineup. I guess it had 10 guys on it. I guess we missed something. I apologize. I apologize. I have not been on top of my game today. Sal Marziani also just batted. So McCullough struck out. I guess they're using Marziani as a 10th hitter. As now a wild pitch allows the runner to move to third. Now I gotta, I gotta zoom in on that jersey number here because we are far away. And that is number 13, who is not on my roster. So that just makes it great. I apologize for all the viewers at home. I mean, I. I'm trying my best to make it right. It's just extremely difficult and hard to figure out. So I guess we're back to Terra Nova. Oh, that one scrambles in, and it's a hit by pitch. So now I guess it'll be Lynham. Here comes Dan McMaster to talk to his man. We're gonna to try to sort this out because Marziani is the right fielder, McCullough is the shortstop, and will later move to second base. But let's see, so there was a strikeout and then there was a walk. So 
I guess Marziani would be your runner on third, Terranova. I'm gonna have to look back at the tape here. My memory is not serving me well. So now, here is lineup. So I think I think we're back on the same page here that that this is the the course of events. You know, it's kind of like singing a song one syllable off. Is that if you mess up once, it's going to throw you off for the whole night? And you know, I'm going to be honest. I need a pair of binoculars to see the the jersey numbers out here. So what makes it? all the more difficult for me to get the job done. So, popped up third base side, Ryder going out, and it is out of play over towards the Cherry Hill bus. One on one. So yeah, like I said, I'm, it, I am in no means uh, uh, perfect, but we try to make it as right as we can. Two runners on, two out. Cherry Hill West leads 3-0 over Gloucester Catholic. West had the two-run wild pitch in the first inning, and then John Young Jr. contributed another run of his own with an RBI double. West will have Bechtel, Jr., and Orifice. Two strikes, two outs, two on, and a 3 nothing game, and a line drive. That one will be stopped on a dive from his knees. He got him. What a play. <laughs> Nothing better from Bechtel. And the side is retired. A diving stop and a huge play to get out of the jam for Cherry Hill West. Three innings through here at Gloucester Catholic, 3 nothing. Top of the fourth, you know what time it is. It's time for DWB Trivia Time. Today's question is, 
When Michael Jordan retired from basketball in 1994, he then played one season of double-A ball with which team? Is it A, the White Sox, B, the Cubs, C, the Phillies, or D, the Atlanta Braves? The answer will be revealed in the bottom of the fourth inning if you don't know already. Strike called. The inning has begun to Bechtel, who made that nice play at second base to end the bottom of the third at a diving stop, made the throw from his knees. Quite a nice play indeed to retire the side with loss to Catholic. Here's the pitch from Lynham, misses high, 2-1. Lynham is ready, kicks and delivers. Way high, goes to the backstop, 3-1. You gotta imagine that, uh, that, that pitch has to be hard to grip. In this kind of weather, you know, my hands are quite cold, but I'm also not on the baseball field. You know, it's uh, 45 degrees, 25 mile per hour wind gusts for a real feel of under 40. Short delay for some sort of equipment malfunction on lipoff. So here we go again. Lineham delivers and a swing and a miss. Count is full. Don't forget, April 1st, we open up our season with opening day between Rancocas Valley and Bridgewater Raritan up in North Jersey as that one misses high. And that is ball four to Bechtel. So here's John Young Jr. Had the RBI double in the third out to left center. It's also made a couple of nice plays in the field but he has swung a hot bat, has reached base twice, reached on an E4 and an RBI double in the first and second, respectively. He did not come around to score after his double. And now he's gonna have his third knock, a base hit in the center for Young. And a beautiful piece of hitting for the Alabama commit to put two runners on against Lynham here in the third. Wasted no time, too. Swung early and was rewarded greatly. So if you're just joining us, Cherry Hill West out to a 3-0 lead and already ganging up a little bit here in the fourth on Gloucester Catholic. They scored their first two runs on a two-run wild pitch in the first inning that scored Young and Marachi. And then... John Young Jr. had an RBI double in the top of the second. Now here's Leo Orifice. He has flown out to center in both appearances so far. He's 0 for 2. Misses high to Orifice. For you Cherry Hill West fans out there, we'll be in action, not at Cherry Hill West, but at Rutgers Camden when they play against the Bishop Eustace Crusaders on Tuesday, March, uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday, May 14th. That's going to be a part of a double header. It's going to be Vineland and Gloucester. That's the first game at 4 o'clock. And then at 7 p.m. will be Bishop Eustace and Cherry Hill West. Should be a very, very good game. 
I'm very excited about the schedule that we have this year for South Jersey baseball as we're dubbing it the South Jersey baseball tour. And, I, and I've said to everybody that's involved that this could be my last year covering South Jersey baseball in a general sense. A nice play at second base. They're going to call him safe. That's going to load the bases. So a bit of a stumble over at second. Bogart struggled to hang on to the baseball. And what's going to be scored with an infield single for Orifice. Now bring it to Marachi. He has singled and struck out in this one. Base is loaded. Lineham in a bit of trouble here in the fourth. There's a strike. 0 oh and 1. Another one, 0-2. Oh Time is called. Of course, my bracket has already been ruined. <laughs> what broke me was uh, I had BYU beating Duquesne. And they beat them 71-67. Uh, North Carolina easily took care of Wagner. Michigan State beat Mississippi State, which I had. Arizona beat Long Beach State by 20. Just looking at some of the games that we've got. Got some good ones going on. And now Lipoff and Lynham are going to meet. Don't forget, speaking of the Thank You Classic that we brought up a couple of innings ago, that will be probably our most action-packed weekend of the year, April 19th through 21st. The games that we'll be covering, Haddon Township versus Timber Creek at 7 p.m. on Friday, the 19th. Saturday is going to be a quadruple header, 9 a.m. Gloucester and Kings Christian, 11.30 a.m. Red Bank Catholic and Gloucester Catholic, 2.30 p.m. will be St. Peter's Prep and Cherokee, and 7 p.m. will be Delcy and Notre Dame from Belmar Rec. Oh, and misses. Count is three and two. And then on Sunday, we'll have two games. Tom's River East and Bayonne at two o'clock. That'll be followed up by Pope John and Donovan Catholic, two private parochial schools squaring off at 4.30 on Sunday the 21st. Three and two, the count from Lynham with the bases loaded. Fly ball. Right field line that will go out of play. And right over there, I think that's Bergen Street over there, whatever it's called, over towards the apartment building. You got a fella running out for that baseball. Taking care of business, as they say. Lineham is set. Throws over to third. Nothing going on there. But the bases are loaded for Mirachi. Fouled straight back.
Yeah, honestly, right now it looks like my <laughs> my bracket is fine except for that one uh, loss for BYU for Brigham Young. Count is still 3-2. Bases are loaded. Jerry Hill West looking to blow this game wide open. And that one got him in the hand. So a bases loaded hit by pitch brings home the fourth run for Cherry Hill West tonight. And it's a 4-0 ball game. Scoring on that hit by pitch by Mirachi will be Bechtel. Young now on third, Orifice on second, Mirachi on first, and no outs recorded so far in this inning. This is a kind of a make or break situation here. You know, Gloucester Catholic, they'll have to. Uh, Get it started on offense here. Now Gloucester Catholic is playing two scrimmages in state. They play Jackson Memorial on March 30th, just a couple of days before opening day on the 1st, which they will open the season for the second year in a row versus Clearview. But Gloucester Catholic is actually flying to Nevada to play other teams in a nationally ranked tournament during that last week of March, just before Easter break, for the Rams. Swing and a miss. So I learned a couple minutes ago that Chris Baker is here this afternoon, and he must be pretty happy about North Carolina beating Wagner. 90 to 62. That one skips away from Lipoff, but he will hang on to it. And he'll keep this out bat uh, this at bat alive. And the way he described it was very nice. Uh, an elite scrimmage. Like I said, I mean, hey, these two teams are some of the top, top dogs in South Jersey. I'm very surprised that they don't have um, a regular season season meeting that they have against each other because it would be, it would be very electric. You know, it'd be a lot more electric than the first week of March. But that's going to be ball four. Lineham surrenders another. And it's going to be the second run scored, bringing in Young. And it is 5-0, as it looks like the infield will meet with Lynham. Just going over strategy here. You know, look, there's going to be ebbs and flows and hiccups and bumps in your journey. But the last thing that they want to do is they, they don't want to get it into Lynham's head that, you know, he's doing something wrong or whatever because, look, um, for everybody here, you know, it's a scrimmage. It's not going to count in the uh, in the long run. You know, I've seen I've seen people, especially at the major league level, say, you know, oh, this team's doing great in spring training. Well, what that doesn't mean anything. The Phillies lost today. They are eight and thirteen in spring training with a couple of embarrassing losses, especially to the Orioles. They lost, I think, it was thirteen to four last night. And they lost 7-6 to Tampa today. But does it matter in October? No, we're not going to be thinking about those spring training games when you get to the playoffs, when it, when it gets to a point in the season where it actually matters. Nobody's going to look back at this game, you know, if Cherry Hill West is in Diamond Classic or, um, or if Gloucester Catholic is deep into the playoffs and say, you know, remember that scrimmage where Cherry Hill West was up five on Gloucester Catholic? I don't think anybody's going to contest that. 
I just saw a bird absolutely dart over our booth and right in front of me. <laughs> and it started chasing a squirrel up a tree. I don't even know if that was on camera, but that was one of the funkiest things that I have ever seen. <laughs> Skips in. 3 0. That is inside, four pitch walk, six nothing west. Now Dennis Barth coming out. And a unexpected and unscheduled pitching change. Guy Lynham is out after surrendering another bases loaded walk to make it six nothing Cherry Hill West. We'll be right back after this as a new arm comes in for the Rams. We'll be right back. New pitcher on the hill for Gloucester Catholic. It is a no out six nothing game in favor of Cherry Hill West. It is a, uh, I don't wanna call it anything bad, but obviously I think these guys are still figuring out um, every, everything that needs to be done. And if there's gonna be a time to have a hiccup in your journey, it's gonna be now. You know, these are two of the elite powerhouses in South Jersey and Cherry Hill West right now has the early edge with the bases loaded. Two straight bases loaded walks brought in runs thanks to Fournier and Ryder as Luciano Macri now bats. He is 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout to his name so far. There's a ground ball off the glove of the pitcher. It's going to go in the left field. One run scores, a second run will score, and a two run single. Macri blows this game wide open. It's eight nothing. That ball looked like it could have been saved in the infield, but it just got past their shortstop Danza. 
So a two-run single by McCree scores Orifice. I apologize. Uh, it scores Marachi and Fournier. And, oh my goodness, look at this. There was a paper airplane that got onto the field. There was a little kid who was playing with some sort of model airplane and it went in the right field, so they called time. And um, <laughs> You see something new every day. And I've seen paper airplanes. I don't think I've seen a full, full-scale constructed, you know, model aircraft enter the field of play. That one skips in 1-0. So Ryder is on second, Macri on first. There's a strike, one and one. I mean, this is huge for Cherry Hill West though, and this will be a big momentum booster for them. You know, as they go into their remainder of their spring schedule as they go into the remainder of their scrimmages this year if they can knock off Gloucester Catholic and say hey even though it didn't count for anything in the standings we still ganged up on them put up eight runs that one goes out I think I think that's something to be something to be very proud of no matter if these guys are wearing the wearing the warm-ups or not you know they are they are still an excellent team, and they deserve their flowers, but I think Gloucester Catholic is a whole different level. And the way that they're playing right now, they are playing very, very good baseball. Gloucester Catholic just going to have to find a way to size them back up with Cherry Hill West's relief. Like, you know, both of these uh, starters come from great backgrounds and even Ryder Garino as we said the South Carolina commit you know a lot of these guys are already having their plans set for the future and where they're going to play at the collegiate level and a lot of the time it's a D1 program swing and a miss and that will be the first out of the fourth it's hard to it's hard to believe that that was the first out of the fourth I mean you know we had <laughs> we had gone so long with just batter after batter after batter, but Holloway strikes out. And that brings us to the man who ended the third, so in layman's terms, it's the, it's the ninth batter of the inning, Ryan Martello. He was hit by a pitch and lined out to right in the second and third, respectively. He'll step off. On deck would be Andrew Bechtel who started off the inning with a walk, came around to score for West's first run of the inning. They have put up five runs with just one out recorded in the fourth. That one misses. 1-0. One of the biggest things that these guys are going to have to worry about right now is control, 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 and composure. Because once you get in a rhythm, whether that's a good rhythm or a bad rhythm, that's going to hurt. That is 100% going to hurt you. And it's going to hurt your confidence. It's going to hurt, you know, your, your fuse, basically. Like, you know, all these stoppages where he's getting startled and having to throw off the mound. And, you know, one of the most basic fundamentals that I've heard from coaches over and over again is just act like you're having a catch with the catcher. Don't be too fancy. Just do what you can. Ground ball. This one will stay in the infield. It is a fair ball throw running across the diamond. He gets the out. And he will move both runners up, but no runs come across. 
as there is now two away. So it seems like they're finally starting to settle down a little as Martello will ground out into a 5-3 after the play at third by Lynham. Or by whoever the new third baseman is that replaced Lynham on the hill. So here is Bechtel batting for the second time this inning. He walked, later came around to score to start this offensive onslaught for Cherry Hill West in this inning. But we are already running it an hour and 43 minutes just in the fourth inning. This game has been a, been a dragger to say, the, to say the least. And remember, you still got to play the fifth, sixth, and seventh as long as Cherry Hill West doesn't put up two more runs and then you'd start getting into mercy rule territory but I honestly don't even know I mean I haven't had a high school game that has gotten into mercy rule territory for scrimmages I don't know if they would just keep playing all seven innings to uh, just get the game over with because remember there was a scenario last year between the Orioles and Pirates where the Pirates had won the game and they had shut out the Orioles in the top of the ninth, but the Orioles had a pitcher scheduled that they needed to get reps. So the two managers of the Orioles and Pirates met and agreed to play a unofficial bottom of the ninth. Now this was spring training, so again, you can kind of throw the rules out the window at your own discretion. But the umpires had already left the field and they played a bottom of the ninth that did not matter. The score didn't matter. They had shut off the video board. They kept the broadcast cameras running, but they made it happen. It was really funky, but they made it happen. Two balls, two strikes. And the pitch. Oh, they're going to call it a strike. Now they're going to throw down to first. The throw is a little wide, but he makes the play, and the side is finally retired. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Cherry Hill West puts up a five spot. We'll be right back after this. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning, it's 8-0 Cherry Hill West as a huge turnaround here in their first scrimmage of the year. It is time for DWB Trivia Time. Today's question is, when Michael Jordan retired from baseball in 19... Uh, ra I'm sorry, retired from basketball in 1994, he then played one season of AA baseball with which team? Was it A, the White Sox, B, the Cubs, C, the Phillies, or D, the Braves? The correct answer is A, the Chicago White Sox. 
Jack Mastero, the first batter of the frame, takes a ball and it's 1 0. One one. There's a ground ball skips off of some sort of mound on first base. I thought it hit off the bag, but it did not. It'll be Mastero, Darius, and Lipoff. The first three for Gloucester Catholic here in the bottom of the fourth. There's a fly ball out to deep left center by Mastero. It is caught in left. One away. This is one of those ballparks where you cannot afford to let the ball go over your head. That's the cardinal sin is that, you know, with endless room to run 465 feet to center field, it's almost impossible to hit a home run here. And, you know, I, I was talking, there was actually a reporter who I, who I spoke with, not going to name the publication because I'm going to uh, wait for the, the story to come out, but um, <laughs> he, uh, we were talking about this very field at Gloucester Catholic, and one of the things he said was, um, you know, that it's very open air and that we... Uh, you know how do you, how do you manage that? And I guess the follow up question is why don't why don't you put up a temporary fence? I think part of the answer is tradition, and another part of the answer is that um, I was told at least by Coach Bill Gore that um, that part of it is budgeting. You've got a lot of fence to cover if you were to make a temporary fence, and the field to my right is the Rams softball field for Gloucester Catholic. So you have to accommodate both teams. And that is gonna be a base hit as the ball got smothered at second by Bechtel. And getting aboard is Darius. Here's lip off. Hanny delivers the first pitch. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Morristown playing GCIT today. Got a piece of it, grounds it out to second base, picked up by Bechtel, throw to first is in time. Lip off is retired. That does move Darius to second base. Two down. I mean, look, Gloucester Catholic is the number one team in South Jersey, pretty much undisputed for a reason. Big swing and a miss. Oh, and one. And stepping off now. Pancoast on deck for Gloucester Catholic for Noah Danza. And he delivers. That one is going to be a high bouncer that allows Darius to get the third. And for yet another time, Gloucester Catholic has a runner 90 feet from home, but the question is, 
do they bring that runner on? And those those Cherry Hill West guys are telling them, watch them, watch them, watch them. That one misses, 3-1. Danny Henney ready to step in here in an 8-0 Cherry Hill West game. Swing and a miss. And the right fielder thought that one was strike three. <laughs> He was ready to go back in the dugout right away. <laughs> that was funny, but we've still got another one to throw. 3-2 with a runner on third. Two outs and an 8-0 West game. The pitch from Dan Henney is going to skip in. And now coming to the plate is Darius. He is safe. The ball skips away. And Darius is the first Gloucester Catholic run of the afternoon. So a wild pitch scores Darius. And now Danza looks to keep this inning alive. Foul back. Again with Henry Pancoast and Joey Bogart, the next two due up for Gloucester Catholic. Three balls, two strikes. And the pitch, swing and a miss. Danny Henney with a big strikeout. One run surrendered, but the side is retired thanks to Date Tate Darius scoring on the wild pitch and another strikeout for West. Four innings through, Cherry Hill West up by seven. Top of the fifth, Cherry Hill West leads 8-1 over Gloucester Catholic here on a brisk Thursday afternoon from the home of the Rams. First batter for West. It's going to be John Young Jr. I'm sorry, no, that's going to be Andrew Bechtel. To be followed by John Young Jr., though. So 
Bechtel Jr. Oh, here we go. Fly ball out to right by Bechtel. Going over into the corner and making the catch. Nice play out there in right by Marziani. And there's one away. John Young Jr., he has been a force to be reckoned with this afternoon. Had an RBI double in the second. Scored a run thanks to a single in the fourth. He has reached base all four times, two for two. Also had an error. That one misses. Bringing it back to Young. Got a piece of it and it's foul. Cherry Hill West having a phenomenal day. And even though the game won't count in the scorebooks, still gonna be a, 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 good, a good game to have if they can symbolically pull this off. takes a called strike. Two strike count, one away. And Junior back at the top of the card for Cherry Hill West in a game that just hit the two hour mark in the fifth inning. There's a swing and a miss. Young gonna run it down to first and he is retired. Two away. I think things are finally starting to settle down for Gloucester Cat. I think they're starting to settle down for both sides. I think that, you know, look, they got those two runs early thanks to the two-run wild pitch. But this game will be a lot closer right now if not for the wild pitches and the, uh, the bases loaded Tom Fuller, if you will, and, you know, some of the errors that we've seen in the field. There's a ground ball. That's going to go through the middle in the center field for a base hit. Leo Orifice with his second knock of the afternoon. And he gets aboard for a two out single. This now brings up the number three hitter, Nick Mararchi. So Orifice now two for four. Runner goes, and he'll get down a second, no problem. Mararchi has reached base twice on a single and a hit by pitch. He struck out in his second at bat. Another throw down a second. No good there.
Oh, that one got him right in the tush. So a hit by pitch to Mararchi, his second of the game. And now here's Fournier. Two runners on and two outs. You got to assume in this situation, Cherry Hill West wants to get a couple runs on the board. Again, I don't know. I've seen before scenarios where in a scrimmage they just – they kind of just say screw it and they play all seven innings regardless of score. But I honestly don't know if that would apply in this situation. It also depends on how much daylight you have left. You know, daylight savings time was a couple of weeks ago to, to ring in spring. And sunset is listed at 714, so with no clouds in the area, you probably have just over an hour. And that's the conservative estimate, you know. You still have to play two more full, th basically two and a half more innings. And at this pace, you know, this is very much reminding me of the Overbrook-Woodstown game from last April. There's a foul ball, 0-2. Oh, that was a game where Woodstown won 7-4, but there were so many delays and discrepancies and trip-ups that the game for seven innings went three hours and eight minutes. That was our longest, <laughs> our longest seven-inning broadcast that we have had. Maybe you shave off a couple minutes for, for a quick interview and your pregame, but still, even at your most um, at your most generous judgment and your most generous guess, that still gives you a three-plus hour game for seven innings. The longest game I ever attended that was nine innings uh, for Major League Baseball was my first game the Giants and Phillies back in August of 2010. It was the second night of former first overall pick Pat Burrell returning to Philly in a Giants uniform, the year that the Giants won their first of three World Series in 2010. And that game, as, as I don't remember it very well, but it went four hours and 24 minutes. A diving stop at second on a third pickoff attempt in a row keeps them at bay. I mean, they're really worried about that lead runner going, but honestly, at this point, I'd say just try to shoot for the batter and get him out in the natural way. You can tell he's very worried about that runner at second, the fact that he's throwing over so many times, but look at this. Now he's running, and now he's safe. So maybe he did have a legitimate reason to move the runner over. That ball missed, and it moved both runners into scoring position as Cherry Hill West is now 180 feet away from putting double digits on the board. With Fournier at the dish. One and two the count. Two outs, no runs across this inning for Cherry Hill West. But they're going to look to capitalize and pounce here, get a couple more across on the board. There's a line drive out to first, picked up on a knee. Oh, how about that? He beat him out. He didn't get the throw down in time. And he catches Gloucester Catholic napping for an RBI single, Grant Fournier. And it is 9-1. That moves the runners to the corners. I thought that was going to be close, but I also thought that he was going to get him out easily. He just wasn't at 100%. And he allowed the run. Wow. Wow. That is a huge mistake that allows Fournier to get on board after walking three times. An RBI infield single by Fournier allows Orifice to score.
And now here's Ryder. Here comes the throw down to second. He is out. And inning is over. Cherry Hill West puts a run up on the board, makes it 9-1, going to the bottom of the fifth. We'll be right back. Well, Gloucester Catholic's going to have a lot of work to do in these next couple of frames to salvage a couple of runs across as it is 9-1, definitely not the result I was expecting. And miss that one misses outside. As the inning begins to Pancoast, it'll be Pancoast, Bogart, and McCullough in the fifth. Swing and a miss, one and one. A little bonfire going on over here. In 40 degrees, really? A bonfire? 1-1, <laughs> one, one, big swing and a miss there by Pancoast. 1-2. and two. I mean, it's crazy cold for me to be sitting outside. But a bonfire? I guess that'll kind of warm you up a little bit. I just smell, uh, I don't know, some burning wood. One's outside, two and two. You know, we had, I thought it was hilarious last week, we had no outdoor events, but we had 70 degree weather. It was 75 last, uh, I think it was Thursday. That's fouled back. You know, it was 75 degrees and we had nothing. And then on Saturday when we had uh, Union County face Camden County, in some JUCO baseball, that was that was the downside. That was when it was starting to get a little colder. It was like 60, but it was also extremely windy. I know I had shorts on that day, but I mean, even I'm bundled up and I'm I'm freezing. <laughs> but I do this for all of you. I do this for our wonderful viewers who want to tune in and watch some quality baseball and. I know that there's a market for watching even scrimmages like this for parents who can't um, watch their kids play, if, you know, if they're at work. There's a swing and a miss. One away. So here is Joey Bogart. First pitch. There's a strike. 0 and 1.
pitching the fifth and sixth is going to be Ricky Orlandini. The lefty who pumps another strike in there. There's a ground ball back up the middle. That will get past Young into center field for a base hit off of Orlandini. So Bogart Dan McMaster coming out and talking to his man. He'll take the ball from him. Actually, I believe that was still uh, Danny Henney. But looks like possibly a pitching change here. The whole infield will gather, and we will have a pitching change. So bottom of the fifth, runner on first with one away, 9-1 uh, Cherry Hill West. We'll be right back after this. Pitching change for the Lions. New pitcher for Cherry Hill West, that being Ricky Orlandini. Here in the bottom of the fifth, two hours and 17 minutes for not even five innings. This game has been one of the longest and <laughs> pro probably just one of the most uh, 
I don't even know what you want to call it. It's been it's been rough. Runner on second for Gloucester Catholic. That being Joey Bogart as Tyler McCullough steps in. He struck out his first time. Swing and a miss. One on one. Cherry Hill West and Gloucester Catholic last year combined for 15 losses. Cherry Hill West went 18 and 8. Gloucester Catholic went 24 and 7. That one skips in. Misses inside. 2 and 1. Throw back to second. I'm surprised the balk wasn't called because it looked like he stuttered in his uh, in his motion. But I think they're going to let it be for now. Although they have called balks in this game, and they've certainly called balks a plenty in scrimmages of years past. But there's a foul ball. Bogart was running, but he now has to go back to second. Two and two. Orlandini delivers and it misses. It's three and two. Pitcher and catcher meeting and looking over this one. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Cherry Hill West up 9-1 here in the bottom of the fifth. <laughs> Orlandini is set. And he delivers. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout. For Orlandini, there's one away. I apologize, two outs now. Pancoast and McCullough. misses. Pancoast and McCullough have been the two casualties in this frame, both strikeouts, one from Henny and one from uh, one from Orlandini. Now with two outs, it's Sal Marziani. There's a strike, one and one. Curveball misses, two and one. Funny enough, this is actually our first time being at Joe Barth for a Gloucester Catholic game. The last time we were here and the only time we've been here was back in July for an American Legion game between Washington Township and Brooklawn, a game that Brooklawn won due to darkness, 12-8. And this game has had a similar amount of offense. It's just been a little more one-sided than the other. Here's the 3-1 as Gloucester Catholic is going to look to get back into this game. Four. 
Well, I guess it's three and two. <laughs> Full count, two outs. Joey Bogart on second. Ricky Orlandini trying to get out of the jam without allowing a run in what's been a 9-1 game here in the bottom of the fifth. That is high. And that will be a walk to Marziani. I'm sorry, to McCullough. I'm sorry, yes, to, to Marziani. McCullough was the strikeout, the second strikeout of the frame. Now, Marziani reaches with his second walk of the day as we go, not to Terra Nova, but we've got a couple of guys that have made switches. And I apologize, I will have to look at his jersey to see, uh, to see the name. So that is number 32, um, Brady Belfast. And on deck would be number, it looks like a 42. I apologize, all, all I got was the lineup and a list of um, scheduled pitchers. That one is gonna take a carom behind the backstop and both runners will move up. Bogart to third and Marziani to second. Terry Hill West having a little trouble under pressure here with Orlandini. That one misses, and this Gloucester Catholic dugout is getting excited. Just a little high. Orlandini having some trouble here. Popped way up. Out to Aiden Ryder, and he comes down with it, leaving two runners on for Gloucester Catholic. If we can fast forward these next two innings, that would be great, 9-1 after five.
Top of the sixth inning, and it's going to be Tyler McCullough on the hill as the first pitch is a strike. And the sixth inning is underway. Now, the scheduled line was going to be Gallagher for two, Guy Lynam for two, Henry Pancos for two, and then McCullough in the seventh. So this is kind of tipping me off to think that they're only going to play the sixth inning and then they'll be done. Especially if they're putting him in. I mean, maybe they switched it around so that he'll just throw the sixth and seventh. There's a strike. It's not like Cherry Hill West is in mercy rule territory. But it's also not like they have to play by the strict bylaws and the rules when it comes to a scrimmage. I mean, you've got, you know, state certified umpires here. But, again, the game doesn't really count in the scorebook. I've seen uh, high school basketball scrimmages that they played six quarters because they wanted they did four varsity quarters and two JV quarters, but they counted it as the same. That one misses. So they can kind of play it by the rule book here. You know, we've had... Uh, our first scrimmage of the year last year between Audubon and Enfield, Connecticut was called in the bottom of the sixth with still considerable daylight left and they had sighted darkness. That's going to drop for a base hit in front of Terranova. And a base hit for West to start the frame. First pitch strike to Macri after the base hit by Ryder. Throw over to first, just a little late. As we said, Gloucester Catholic with two scrimmages at home. They'll be playing Cherry Hill West and Jackson Memorial. And that'll be followed up. Or actually, I'm sorry, Jackson Memorial will be on the 30th of March. There they pop up down the left field line and foul. Well out of play there. And it's a two-strike count to Macri. Not saying they're running out of sunlight yet, but it's going to be a lot more difficult as the minutes tick by. There's a foul ball. One and two. That one misses. But as we said, I mean, this is one of the longest scrimmages I have ever seen. And the only thing that's going to stop them is the sun. Yesterday, I'm sorry, uh, Tuesday, we had SUNY Orange and Camden County softball. There's a, oh my goodness, look at this. This is a rocket. But way out there in center field, Terranova makes the catch. He's going to have to race back to first. The infield gets it. And oh my goodness, Terranova. What a play. Wow. And they, if they had timed that second throw a little better, they would have doubled him off. How about that? One away. What a catch by Jake Terranova. 
You do not get much better than that. Falling backwards. Remember, that's that's a good 380, 390 feet out there. That ball's popped up in the infield. Who's got it? It is McCullough, and there's two away. So now we start to play quicker baseball. When did that start? <laughs> when did that start happening? Good grief. Here's Holloway. They throw back to first. The ball gets away. Ryder goes down to second. And he gets in there on an E1. Holloway 0 for 3 this afternoon as that one's high. Two strikeouts to his name plus a ground out to second base. Swing and a miss. Gloucester Catholic infield playing a deep shift as now they're going to throw back to second. The base almost got dislodged from its from its post. And to think that we're going to have to do this all over again tomorrow with Clearview and Audubon. Hopefully the weather will be a little nicer. I mean, the sun is out and I'm like trying to warm up my hands up like by pointing to the sun. But even that is basically a, mute, a moot point at, at this point. I mean, you can hear me kind of clamoring a little bit. My car is right behind me. It's almost time for us to pack up and Get on the road to the next one. <laughs> that one misses. Ball four. And the offensive onslaught continues here in the top of the sixth as they walk to Holloway, brings up Martello. So two runners on, first and second with two away. McCullough trying to get out of the jam and prevent this lead from getting any worse for Cherry Hill West. Two hours and 38 minutes has been the time of this game. Start time was 4 p.m. exactly. And I thought by this point we would have we would have been long gone, but I have been sitting and standing here for quite a long time with just so many delays and a lot of different changes. Mastero, oh, he dropped the ball, but they will say that because uh, it was on the transfer that they will count it as a catch and an out. Inning over, bottom of the sixth on the way, 9-1, Cherry Hill West.
Well, won't you believe it? We are almost at the finish line. Bottom of the sixth inning. Nine to one, Cherry Hill West in a game that has turned many heads for the sole reason of this is not what we expected. This is not what we foreshadowed. And Cherry Hill West has put their name on the map if it wasn't on the map already. As Ricky Orlandini is back in for the sixth inning. For his first challenger. There's a strike right down Broadway. One, one. If my numbers are correct, then that would be Jake Terranova. And then it would be Lynam and Mastaro. It looks like that's probably correct, just looking at Terranova's batting stance. But again, with players not having the jerseys it's it's hard I mean it's 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 a difficult job that one hit a car somebody behind home plate is going to have an expensive windshield to fix I don't know if it hit a hit just the metal I mean you could put a dent in it get a suction cup a little bit of hot water and you could take care of it but if it's a broken windshield then that is Going to be an expensive repair tomorrow. Skips in, two and two. And I think everybody's just kind of anxious to get out of here at this point, you know, regardless of the score. You know, very rarely does Gloucester Catholic put themselves in this kind of situation. You know, they were 24 and seven last year, but a lot of those losses were very close and respectable games as Terranova takes a walk to start the sixth. You know, look, just looking at their schedule from last year, from their state championship winning 24-7 and club, they lost to Hun 6-5, lost to St. Joe's Metuchen 11-6, Williamstown 13-11, Red Bank Catholic 5-2, uh, Donovan Catholic 9-3, GCIT 6-4, Steiner 6-5, and that was their last loss of the season. So first of all, only two losses in the Tri-County Royal Division. And they weren't even to Kingsway or to Clearview or to, um, not St. Augustine, I'm sorry. Um, I'll throw over to first, not in time. But to any of the other powerhouses like Washington Township in the division, another good team in the Tri-County Royal, along with Kingsway up there as well. You know, you look at that division, it's a stacked division. Even for a team like Williamstown, they played Cherry Hill West at the Coaches versus Cancer Showcase in April down in Linwood. Their total record was 6-18, and but they held their own versus Cherry Hill West. They lost 10-5, to but people had a lot of hype around Williamstown last year just because they were off to um, a hot start going one and two in their first three. That's a strike on a swing. As they say, line them went around. They lost to Washington Township at St. Augustine and then right back to back in the second week of April, they beat Delcy 5-3 and Gloucester Catholic 13-11. That's hard to do. It, it's hard to win one game against a team that is you know, having their odds stacked against you. It's hard to do that once. It's even harder to do it twice. There's a swing and a miss. What a curveball. Orlandini sends Lynam packing one away. That was a great pitch and an even better result as Mastaro, or I'm sorry, no, the pinch hitter for Mastaro, whoever this is, <laughs> at this point, at this point, I don't even know. It's just a guy in a hoodie. <laughs> I 
At this point, there's no telling who's who. And that's the problem we have with scrimmages, is that, you know, like, at least when you're watching scrimmages at, at a higher level, the players have their jerseys on. And it was fine for Gloucester Catholic to start. It was fine for us to start for both teams because we had a visual representation of who was on the, who was on the field for Cherry Hill West, and we also had their scheduled pitchers. And for Gloucester Catholic, it was them having uh, the black jerseys on that had the jersey numbers on the back that were correctly coordinated, excuse me, coordinated to their um, their game jerseys that they would wear on the diamond. And then one by one, it just started to break down, and <laughs> there were less and less players on the hill that were actually wearing those black jerseys that we started out the game with. But one thing you have to ask, as the sun is about to go behind the Gloucester Catholic Middle School, one of the things you have to ask is, how long does this game persist, as that is a walk that puts two runners on for Gloucester Catholic? One of the things you have to ask is, how long will this persist until they call the game due to darkness? I know as soon as they do, I am shutting off the laptop, putting the battery away, and getting the you-know-what out of here. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt in my mind. But we are right now sitting at 2 hours and 47 minutes for a 6-inning game. I mean, if you're averaging like 20-minute innings, that's fine. But by the time we'll be done, this game will probably be over three hours. And that one's fouled off. 0-1. By Tate Darius. Actually, no. Hold on. We do have a new batter at the dish. And are you kidding me? Is that Terra Nova again? Or I'm sorry. It's number one who I do not have a jersey number for. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, number one takes downstairs. And this is where everything when it comes to scrimmage baseball starts to break down, especially when we're not setting up behind home plate so we can't, you know, ask the coaches directly questions about who, who a player is or how to say a guy's name. Like at Rutgers Camden, at least, it's very simple. We don't have to walk very far. And it's very, and it, it, it's, it's simple as you think. We set up behind home plate. We have easy access to both dugouts, home and away. You know, maybe, maybe in, the, in the interim of an inning, in a break, we'll ask a coach, hey, how do you say this guy's name? You know, you know how to say Terra Nova. <laughs> There's a strike. Ricky Orlandini with one away. Two balls, two strikes, two on. As he is trying to hold Gloucester Catholic at bay in an eight-run game. Ground ball hit sharply out to first. Takes a tough hop. He'll take it to the bag himself. Did he get him? Yes, he did. And that moves the runner to third. Two outs. So Darius is out on the three unassisted. A good play. And now here's Lipoff. Or Guy Lynham. So I guess that they must have put in a whole bunch of different subs and they switched around the order a whole bunch because now it's Jack Mastero on deck. I'm not even contesting it anymore. I'm just kind of letting them go with it. I've, I've been scoring the game, but there's a whole bunch of X's and dotted lines and arrows. It kind of looks like a treasure map on my scorebook just because of how many changes and alterations we've had to make in this game a strike to line them. So, I guess the last batter was Terranova. That 
that one misses. One on one. I think as soon as the sun goes behind the houses back here on Bergen Street, they're probably going to say we're done. And I think even both teams are just looking at how how much pacing is going on in the outfield. <laughs> These guys are basically ready. They're ready to go home. And so am I. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's ball four. Base is loaded. Here's Mistero. So here is Mistero. Two outs. Bases loaded. Big spot for Orlandini. There's a strike. I mean, you're losing daylight fast here. Two hours and 52 minutes in the bottom of the sixth inning. I know I've been, you know, kind of dogging on how long this game has gone, but we posted a tweet in the top half of the fifth when the game had hit 2.15. The, the, the first four innings had taken two hours and 15 minutes, and we have only completed one inning and almost two innings in the span of 45 minutes. Basically, this game is the same pace as the Titanic movie from 97 with Leo DiCaprio. <laughs> I mean, that movie was a hair over three hours. That one misses, 2-1. But at least there was action all throughout. At least you had a sinking ship. The only thing we've got to worry about here is a sinking sun and sinking daylight. Orlandini with the bases loaded. Two outs, he delivers. Big swing and a miss for Mastero. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, no room to run. The bases are loaded. And here we go. Ball four. Here, now it's 9-2. And we go back to Darius. I mean, for a little while, that shadow that the sun was casting was so prominent where the pitcher would be in the shade and the batter, catcher, and umpire would all be straight in the sun. And that would probably make it harder for them to swing and hit because you can't see the ball that well in the sun. And there's really not a great batter's eye here to work with. I mean, you've got this like a dumpster, a green dumpster in center field. But if you're just a, uh, a batter looking straight out, there is no batter's eye. And in fact, the white windows and the white panels on the Catholic middle school over here is, I mean, let's be honest, it doesn't make a great batter's eye. It does not. But these guys still got to work through it and they've still got to see the ball out of the hand and make contact. Just like that, there's a ground ball. Young has it, flips it to first. The throw gets away. One run will score. A second run's going to come around, and Gloucester Catholic has made this a game on an E6. 9-4 now. So Gloucester Catholic gets two more runs on an E6 by Young.
now here is Lipoff. Gloucester Catholic finally starting to get some life, but is it too little too late? I mean, that's the question you got to ask yourself here. You're racing against the clock right now, and this is the same scenario that we had on Tuesday. And now running out to the mound is Dan McMaster. He is hustling out there just to talk to with his pitcher, Orlandini. And, you know, look, this is a tough situation for these guys. A five-run lead was as big as 9-0 at one point. Cherry Hill West has been in control since the get-go, and now McMaster will step off the hill, and he'll let Orlandini, Orlandini go back to work. Runners on first and third, Mastero and Darius. As we're in the middle of the order with the Kingsway transfer, Braden Lipoff, big swing and a miss. After the mound visit, it's two and one. You gotta imagine with you running out of daylight here. I mean, the sun is just above the houses behind us. You probably have less than 10, 15 minutes left. And that's a swing and a miss. Inning over. Um, umpires are going back out there, and so are the Gloucester Catholic fielders. So. We will play until you can't no more. 9-4, going to the seventh. Let's play one more, top of the seventh inning. And this is gonna be a first for us in about uh, 15 seconds. We will have hit the three hour mark of this game. Appeal to first, says he went. And it's 0-1 to West. That one misses. There's another strike, one and two. Running out of daylight, running out of time here at Gloucester Catholic. It is officially a three hour game. That one misses, two and two. Boston Catholic put up two run, uh, put up three runs rather in the bottom of the sixth. Ground ball out to short, throw across, is in time. Mastero's got that one, one away.
first pitch is a strike. Oh, almost swung out of his shoes, and it's one and two. I think he got a piece of it, though. Could have been way worse. Up high, three and two. I'm sorry, two and two. Little tapper up the line and it's foul. Three, two. By the way, a little score update. Gateway took down Salem 9 to nothing in their scrimmage. Nothing yet on Lenape and Jackson Memorial or Morristown and GCIT. A couple of good games were had today. Two outs in the top of the seventh. The last thing you want for Gloucester Catholic is to not have an opportunity in the bottom of the seventh. But the last thing if you want for if you're Cherry Hill West is to give Gloucester Catholic an opportunity. You're up by five, but I think Cherry Hill West knows that they win either way. Either they defeat Gloucester Catholic, you know, by hand, manually, whatever you want to call it, with three outs, if they do it the normal way, or they do it by just literally waiting for time. They stall a little bit. They call time. Uh-oh, here's a rocket out towards right. That's going to drop for a base hit. Got a good read on it, and that's a two-out single for Cherry Hill West. Back to John Young after the base hit by Bechtel. Swing and a foul. Two outs and a runner on first for West as Gloucester Catholic is going to try to speed this inning up a little bit with McCullough. And that one misses to Young. Young is probably a good candidate for player of the game. Reached on an error to start the game on the first pitch. Had an RBI double, a single, a strikeout. Although you could also argue that you could probably get Luciano McCree or even uh, Grant Fournier for reaching base all five times with three walks and two singles. That's a walk. So Young walks and here's Orifice. Orifice, two for four. 
two fly outs, two singles. Simple as that. I'll put up my Venmo one more time. Not to be greedy, but <laughs> just because it is 40 degrees and I've been here for the last four hours. <laughs> just saying. Oh, man. Don't forget our next broadcast will be Friday, March 22nd. Between the Clearview Pioneers and the Audubon Green Wave, we'll be back in action on Tuesday the 26th with Lenape and Audubon in a scrimmage. Ground ball, third base side, that is a foul ball. I feel like the energy is a lot lower here than we usually see from Gloucester Catholic. A lot of the, a lot of the fans have dispersed from both sides. But now, now it's getting a little dark. And it's, it's not that easy to see it on the camera but just in person. In person, it's looking pretty grim. The sun is below the houses on Bergen Street. You could actually see a, a really nice purple haze as there's a floater out towards second base. Bogart is there, but nobody's covering the bag and the bases are loaded. So an infield base hit on the miscue gives Orifice another hit. And here's Marachi. You see a very nice purple haze or a purple purple tint or whatever with the Brooklawn water tower and back behind us. You can see where that sun is starting to set right over Bergen Street. So you can imagine it won't be long. I mean, you know, obviously these guys can't have lights because of the apartment buildings and public structures around the complex. And if they don't have a temporary fence, you surely will not have any lights. I'll tell you that. And now we're going to have a mound visit. Oh my goodness. Never mind. He's just giving the ball. <laughs> you can tell, folks, I'm starting to get a little restless, but... You know, when you make it to the big leagues and you make it to the big time, you'll be standing in a press box, you'll be sitting in a press box, and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. But these are the days for people like me that have to hustle and have to make it our own way, and sometimes that means standing in the freezing cold for three hours and ten minutes It's inside. Did, I just heard the left fielder say, just call it. <laughs> I told you these guys are getting restless. They're ready to go home. There's a ground ball, third base side. Picked up, throw to first. Mistero didn't see it. It was an airmail, two run score. And that will be an E5 that make it a seven run game and Mastero just didn't see it, and even if he did see it, the ball was several feet above his head. No way he could have reached that. So now we go back to Fournier. Strike one. Now this basically solidifies that West will win, as if I think the previous innings were, were pretty telling, but now there is a 0% chance that Gloucester Catholic has enough time to end this inning and and that is not an or, that is an and, put up eight runs on the board to end it. Everybody in the Gloucester Catholic dugout that's left is standing. 
probably for warmth. But here's the O2 from McCullough outside. Runners are on first and third. In what has been an improbable game, but if you didn't believe in Cherry Hill West, now you do. Or at least now you should. Because this has been an excellent performance by them, and it has been a, uh, a very, very good game for the Lions. They have put themselves in a great position to start the season, and whoever they will play next will have to keep their head on a swivel as the two-strike touch misses. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, and the pitch to Fournier misses. Yes! It's over! Uh, hold on now, hold on. Wait a second, no, it is not over. They are calling the inning early but they are forcing an early change so that Cherry Hill West will get to take the field. I don't understand that. Why take the field again? It's the, I mean, the game is basically over. I understand you want to give everybody your chance, but I mean, they're in a full sprint out there. And I'm just, oh my goodness. I know it's not a rule you don't have to complete all seven innings, but these guys are gosh darn determined to We'll take a, I don't know how long this break is going to be because uh, I guess we'll just keep it here because why not? It's 11 to 4. The moon is high right above us here. Where is that little thing? There it is. Great shot there. And look at this. Just like that, they are already, I mean, you can see that very nice uh, purple tone. It actually looks better on camera than it does in person, but there's, I, I just can't believe they're doing this because the game is over. It's 11 to 4. I guess they are just incredibly... Um, intent and um, adamant about getting this done. So I guess he just got to kind of put a giant question mark in the scorebook and put it there. So here is Danza, followed by Pancoast. But the pitcher warmed up so fast, I don't even think he's ready. He's not throwing strikes. It just kind of feels like a waste of everybody's time. Because, I mean, I, I understand I have my own reasons for wanting to get out of here because it's cold and it's 11-4 and the sun is almost setting. The sun has almost set. It's 7:15, so technically, if you look at it, at the Weather Channel, it's three minutes past sunset with no lights. But what are? But here is where you have to ask the question: What are the chances that in the time it takes for us to lose all visibility of the field, how long will it take for Gloucester Catholic to score the needed eight runs to tie and win the game? in a scrimmage that doesn't count. Like, I'm not trying to be a whiner. I'm not trying to be a, a complainer or a yapper here. I'm just saying you have to look at it from a practicality standpoint of, you know, are we wasting everybody's time here? The pitcher for Cherry Hill West, um, that being Grant Fournier, he could have pitched the sixth inning 
and you make it a six-inning scrimmage. Every team has adapted and bent and even just flat-out changed the rules for a scrimmage because it doesn't matter what rules you play by because it's a scrimmage. As long as the umpires are on the field and the players are on the field, it doesn't matter what else you do. Gloucester Catholic had 10 batters come to the plate, 10 separate men in the lineup card. You know, you, you get to you get to be you kind of get to play free range baseball. The swing and a miss. And there's one away, but they are determined in making sure that this game is is over and done. Runner on first for Gloucester Catholic. That one misses low. Three hours and 17 minutes. Swing and a miss. Imagine if you play a full nine. <laughs> Gonna get into the four hour territory. And it's funny, cause I've seen both ends of this. We had a game between the Tigers and the Phillies back in the summer of last year, in the uh, second year of the pitch clock. And uh, it was two hours and seven minutes for a nine inning game. It was, it was actually really fascinating. I think I spent an entire inning, you know, in line waiting for hot dogs. Hadn't really seen anything like it before. And I'll just show, I, I did this before to show the lighting. If we turn down the shutter a little bit to 1750, this is pretty accurate to the lighting that we actually see here. The shutter setting that we usually have on is kind of brightened up a little bit so that viewers can see the batter and pitcher easier. There's two away, two strikeouts for Fournier, but umpires walking out in front of the plate, and that's it. 11 for the final. They, they didn't want to wait one more out. And deservedly so. Cherry Hill West knocks off Gloucester Catholic in their first scrimmage of the year. And how about that for West? A final score of 11 to 4 in an offensive heavy game. And they'll shake hands at home plate. And after a three hour and 19 minute affair, the umpires will walk away. And so will we. And yes, I do understand the argument that uh, you know, players need the most at best they, that they can in the preseason, but you also have to worry about player safety and the fact that if they can't see the ball or if they can't see the ball well, that could lead to some problems. Cherry Hill West looks to improve their 18-8 and record after 2023 and a South Jersey Group 3 semifinals appearance, and they are quite excited going for a quick jog. And going for quite an exciting jog at that. Your player of the game presented by Harper Driving School is John Young, who got himself three RBIs on the afternoon in the 11-4 win for Cherry Hill West. That's all for us today. From everybody here at Dan Wilkins Broadcasting, our social media coordinator, Anthony De Palma, our graphics crew, Gavin Van Rell and Caleb Lane, I'm Dan Wilkins. We will see you tomorrow in the afternoon, same time, but a different place. Clearview and Audubon will square off in their first scrimmage of the 2023 season. We'll see you guys next time.